How's it going you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs. Now I just added this little guy, an inline splice to my standard packout kit. Now this holds all the common components I use on DIY electrical projects around the house. So let me show you how it fits into my standard wire connector setup. All Wago 221 lever nuts that I'd carry on me so I'd have for any projects around the house. You have the 221 412, 413, and 415. These can handle 12 to 24 gauge wire. And then I'd also carry the 613, which can go up to 10 gauge, which comes in handy if you have a 240 volt circuit, 30 amps. So I'd carry those all the time. And then this is the new addition. So this is the inline splice, also called the 2401. And it comes in super handy for certain applications. And now this is kind of my standard four that I use all the time. I carry the 613 on me, but most commonly these four are what I'm using. So what are those three use cases that I'm using the inline splice on my projects for at home? Now that first applications, I'm using these inline splices on lighting circuits and it's to avoid the super common issue that DIYers make around their house. The wire nut is connected. I don't have any exposed copper. It feels pretty tight where the wire nut is biting into the wire but then many people forget to do a pull test. So if I pull, I can already see that the wire's coming out and there the stranded came out and I had a very weak connection. Now the wire nut's still connected on, but that's because it was biting into the solid. So here's the example. You can see the wire nut actually was just biting into the solid core and then the stranded was just getting wrapped around the solid core, but really with a very loose connection. So why is this the first application that I'm using this inline splice, right? We're getting the benefit of solid core coming in and then stranded. So we have the stranded wire coming in. I'm looking through the housing to make sure it goes across the bus bar before closing that lever to make a solid connection. And you can see overall, the packaging of that wire nut is super efficient now. I love these on wire. I love these on light fixtures because before the two pin WAGO gave us that nice connection between solid and stranded. It's gonna be a much more robust and consistent connection, but you're not having to double back your wire down to the light fixture. So if you compare the two, right? So now you're seeing that the inline splice just from the overall envelope of how much space it takes up is much better. So that's why I'm using the inline splice on most of my lighting circuits. And here's a real example where I'm connecting up an integrated LED light fixture. It literally takes me about 18 seconds to connect the hot, neutral, and ground because you're really just flipping the levers and the connectors are already in place. So if you're using wire nuts, that's why it's so common for DIYers to make a bad connection. And because vanity lights and ceiling lights were usually up in the air and also holding the fixture. So anything we can do to make those wire connections easier to make is super smart so you're not rushing things and ending up having bad connections by using wire nuts. If you guys haven't tried out Wagga Lever Nuts, you can look right below the video, you'll see a link over to our Amazon store. You can go to the electrical list and there's multiple different kits. One of the most common right now is the 90 piece kit and that's because it actually has the inline splice included. So you can get the 412, 413, 415 and inline splice and get enough of those to test it out on projects around your house to see if it's something that you kind of want to stock for any of your future projects. Now application number two is anything that you know is temporary. Now technically my example right here is another light fixture so it's a little bit redundant but this is just a light socket that I might use for a rehab project. So if I'm redoing a space, doing drywall work, taking out the light fixtures, but I still want some light, this is a 100 watt LED light bulb on a very inexpensive light socket. And I always keep these inline spices connected up to the neutral and hot side of these wires. So I can just take these levers, flip the levers, connect to those up to the wires coming out of the ceiling, and now I have light. Then once we get done with the drywall or painting or whatever we're doing, all I have to do is flip two levers and I'm able to pull that right off the ceiling and then go back to wire my light fixture. I don't have to do any stripping of the wiring. I'm not damaging the wiring. It is an extremely easy way when you have anything that is temporarily wired 
to both install and uninstall that without creating any damage. I'm also interested to get your guys' feedback. What else have you been using these inline splices for or would you use these inline splices for? I will take your comments and those most common repeated applications. I'll put that in a pinned comment right below the video so you can quickly go down there and see if there's other applications that might pertain to what you're doing around your house. And then number three comes to the electrical panel. If you ever need to move around any circuit breakers, you know sometimes you're moving a circuit and now your wire is too short. So what do you do, right? You need to extend that out. Now you need to check your local code, but in most municipalities, you can extend that out and have a wire connector inside your electrical box because that is considered a enclosed junction box. Now you can see the inline splice is perfect for that. It's gonna be perfectly in line, extending out that hot wire further down to now connect up with your circuit breaker that might be a little bit further down your bus bar. Now, if you have to do that many times over, that's why it's so important for this wire connector not to take up much room because you don't want it to fill your entire electrical panel with wire connectors. Now, if you're wanting to reposition an outlet in your home, it might be much easier than you think, even if you don't have attic access from above or basement or crawl space access from below. There is a way to get that outlet further down the wall, actually without doing any drywall damage or having to paint anything. Check out this video right here. I'll walk you through the complete process and you might be surprised on how easy it is. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on that next one. Take care.